So uh, we're, we're we're getting more news about the impeachment, which uh, which I am against. Uh, I don't know. I, against might be a kind of a strong term. I don't care. Is that is that fair? <laughs> Uh, I think this is dumb. And, you know, people people came at me and, and were like, well, do you want him to run again? Do you want him to run 2024 again? Is that what you want? You want him to have a secret uh, service uh, person? It's like, yeah, Bush has secret service personnel. Both the, both the Bushes do. So does Clinton and Obama. And these guys are war criminals. So you're fine with war criminals having uh, secret service detail. But not a giant asshole. <laughs> what? It's like, where's the line for you guys? Look, I'm not saying what happened at the Capitol was acceptable because it wasn't. Uh, and I think that, you know, those people should be prosecuted uh, for doing what they did. But the consequence of that is is one, what the previous story was about, just digital uh, digital oligarchical censorship. And two, this performative fucking impeachment. So, what are the what are the reasons why they say that this impeachment is important? Is oh well, he can't run in twenty twenty four, and he loses his Secret Service detail or and whatever. So, which I don't even really give a shit about. And two, uh, he is going to be in his like mid to late seventies in twenty twenty four. First of all, if he even lives that long, because this is not a person that is in good health. Let's say he even lives that long. To be on the campaign trail is such a high stress thing to go to three different states in one day to deal with international issues, to meet with people. You know, like you have to think um, very intersectionally in order to be a leader of a country, in order to campaign. You have to know a lot of different things about a lot of different policies. Because regardless of what you say, anybody that runs for a leadership position, um, and I'll, I'll, I'll give Tulsi Gabbard this, is I have seen Tulsi Gabbard say, I don't know enough about this subject to comment. She might be one of the only few politicians that has been able to accept that. I have my issues with Tulsi. I have been mad at Tulsi about shit that she's done. Um, and, you know, my support for Tulsi has led me to believe that I don't want to support any sort of particular party or any sort of particular candidate. I will support ideologies. I will support movements. I will support people. Um, but she's the only person that's been like, I don't know enough about this subject to make a comment on it. Right. But everybody else don't. And when Trump's on the campaign trail, let's see, he's 78 years old. Yeah. Like he's going to be on the fucking campaign trail. And even if he's pumped full of drugs, like eventually the drugs are going to win. Right. And they're going to like do more damage to the body than than good. And he'll fucking croak. So him rerunning again is like a moot point because he's so old. He's so why are we hanging our hats on these old fucking white dudes? Why is that a thing? Are you kidding me? Or is there not a fucking like 30 some odd year old uh, uh, socialist that, that that people can champion instead? Sorry, I get, I get very upset about that sort of stuff. So I think this is the performative reaction uh, to hide basically Patriot Act 2.0, right? Um, we're basically we're seeing what we're seeing on, on YouTube. They're going to crack down on any sort of anti-establishment thought. And if it's not pro-Democrat um, or if it's not pro-corporatist and, and, and middle of the road or centrist or what have you, um, then it's going to be considered like you're a capital stormer. That's what you're that's what it's gonna seem like, right? You're you're a capital storming Republican and you need and you're and you're and you're causing damage to the country because you don't line up with the with the way uh, we think. You don't you don't think platitudes are enough. Boy, if if platitudes were currency, we'd all be bajillionaires, don't you think? Like we'd be rivaling fucking Jeff Bezos money. Again, these kind of um these kinds of uh, ideologies are 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 against critical thinking, and it it suppresses intelligence in people. I believe people are very intelligent. 
But I feel like people need to use that intelligence. They need to be able to access that intelligence in their brain. And they have the capabilities to do it. But by falling in line, by saying any blue will do, oh, well, you know, like we have to impeach. Oh, it's fine that we give up our rights uh, for, for safety, things of that sort. You're giving that up. You're giving up your intelligence. You're giving up rational thought. You're giving up having discussions about tough idea ideas and ideologies. Now there is a split, right? Um, but, and and the split exists in in both sides and 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 both parties. Uh, in 2016, it was the left. Uh, we all had the Bernie folks. The Bernie folks got burned. Um, and then Hillary lost, right? And, and and the left was was so scared of Trump that what did they do? It fractured. You went the liberal side of the left, and then the true left, the the progressive left, uh, and the and the more mainstream corporate Democrat, the liberal side of the left, uh, started pushing these unwarranted RussiaGate conspiracy theories that have time and time again been proved wrong and wrong and wrong and wrong and they still push it and they still push it and they still push it because they the democrats don't want to take any accountability for what happened they don't want to say that yes the first black president that 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 was in office didn't actually help with the racial divide in this country didn't actually help people get health care didn't actually help people get out of poverty as we thought that he would and instead of being like yeah we kind of fucked up They're like, oh, Russia did it. Oh, did Russia make Obama drink the flip water? Was that was that the Russians? Did Russians prevent Hillary from going into Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania? Was that the Russian? Oh, did did the Russians uh, tell her to laugh about the death of a man? Was that was that the Russians? Boy, I didn't know the Russians were so damn powerful. Holy fuck! <laughs> And they did all this while disavowing uh, the winner of capitalism in, in 2016, Donald Trump. Not my president. How many times did you hear that? Not my president. He's not my president. Kind of. That's how the how elections work. Now. We're seeing this happen on the right. We're seeing this happen with the GOP in 2020. So what happened? Those um, uh, the, the 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 faction of far left, far right. Sorry, not far left, far right. Um, they're pushing unwarranted conspiracy theories of election fraud. And look, there is election fraud. America's elections are co-opted by corporations. We all know this. There there was a guy uh, that was like, "Oh, fucking diebold." That's the problem. And it's like, yeah, these corporations that, that 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 create these voting machines are a problem because they have proprietary software that only they can look at. So you can't verify whether you you know you did vote for who you voted for. That is a real problem. It's just not what happened here. If you want to talk about election fraud, in the general elections, most likely it is the Republicans. It is the Republicans who 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 uh commit election fraud and what are they doing now they're sitting there saying well joe biden's not my president they're disavowing joe biden so it's basically the same thing that the left did and it's very it's also very reminiscent of what happened when obama was elected because there were a bunch of conservatives that were like this guy's not my president and then that's what they so it's like this we're just going in, in a cycle And, you know, the rest of the Republicans are are staying centrist. And they're and they're, you know, they're like, we got to be reasonable here. How can you have a peaceful transition of power ever when one side is going to disavow the president and not think that he is uh, fit for leadership? I mean, and this has been going on for a while. Anytime that one party doesn't win. People feel like they've been cheated out of the election which is why we should probably have ranked choice voting in this country, because then people won't feel like they've been cheated out of the election because at some point their choices actually mattered. Nobody feels disenfranchised in that case. Joe Biden's talked about what? Healing the nation, healing the soul of the country, unity, that sort of stuff, right? 
Uh, th- this impeachment won't do that. This impeachment won't do that. If they did want to unify the country, I think they should start with apologizing to the Green Party, the Libertarians, the Socialists, uh, and all the lefties they tried to get rid of and smear. All the people that they were okay with getting demonetized. The threats of violence from the liberals that I've seen. The name calling, the condescension. You'd apologize for that. You'd start there. You, go, you know what? Maybe you had something to, to say there. But to come out and say, well, if you're a socialist, if you're a democratic socialist, if you're this, you're that, nah, we don't want to deal with you. You're wrong. I see what you're saying, but fuck off. That's not unifying the country. If you can't even put out an olive branch to people who are so-called on your side, how are you going to look at somebody with vehemently opposite viewpoints and offer them an olive branch and bring them to the negotiating table, bring them into the conversation? And what this really solidifies is that there are two acceptable narratives and voices. It's either the Democrats or the Republicans. And again, once you boil it down, they're both pro-corporate, they're both pro-war, they're both anti-worker, they're both pro-capitalism. And they're both authoritarian in their own special way. So this impeachment is is very performative. You know, and... They stoked the fires of the divide. The Democrats were were just as um, instrumental in what happened on January sixth as the as I think the Republicans were in terms of creating divide, in terms of creating disenfranchisement. What do you think is going to happen when when you start calling an entire group of people deplorables or or dumb, inbred, what have you? What do you think is going to happen? You don't think those people are going to get upset by that shit? And and again, eventually go to a right-wing populist strongman that is just going to stoke the fires even more to be like, hey, remember how those people called you deplorables? What do you think is going to happen? You don't think those people are going to be fucking pissed? So now they're using this impeachment as a way to, to cover up the fact that, again, they fucked up. The Democrats don't want to take any accountability. I would love to see a Democrat take accountability for some of some some of the fucking shit that they did. But we have to worry about another right wing populist that might show up. What about Josh Hawley? That dude popped up out of nowhere, started saying a bunch of shit that Trump was saying. He seems to have gotten a, a, a decent amount of popularity. Same thing with Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz was like, yeah, whatever. Insurrect. They're all trying to vie for 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 that faction of Trump supporters that that are that that believe that believe in that Trumpism. That Marjorie Taylor Greene lady who says that the Jewish people have a space laser cannon. First of all, I feel like we would have seen it. I feel like if you're going to use a space laser to cause forest fires, it's going to have to be a pretty big space laser. Second of all, it's called a phaser. Uh, <laughs> but like, the, you know, this fucking person got elected into Congress. That makes our that makes <laughs> that makes American elections a fucking joke uh, that someone like Marjorie Taylor Greene can can get into a position of power like that. But, you know, there's enough support for what she's saying. That she might run as a populist in 2024. These are people that I think, you know, we should be like, oh, shit. Is, are, are, we, are, we, <laughs> are we building another Trump by giving these people a shit ton of attention? Because that's part of what got Trump elected is media sensationalism. They spent... <laughs> 
<laughs> sorry for bumping the mic there, but they spent like 25 minutes. I remember, man, I, uh, I had a day off the road and I was hanging out with my buddy in, uh, in DC and he, and it was his day off too. Um, and he was like, Hey, I'll buy you lunch. Uh, and, and we'll have some, we'll have some drinks in the afternoon. Yeah. And I was like, cool. I'll, so I took the t- train down. We met and we sat down and CNN was on the fucking TV. Um, because Trump was going to give this fucking press conference or some shit. Uh, and we sat there and we ate our lunch. We had a drink and we ordered our second drink. Roughly 25, 30 minutes. And the empty podium was still on the fucking screen. He hadn't even shown up. And CNN still was talking about Trump might show up. The fuck? But it was good for ratings, right? It it ha- ha- kept people hooked into the fucking TV because Trump is good for ratings because he's going to say some crazy shit. And once again, now that now the media is making stories um, about Marjorie Taylor Greene. About Josh Hawley. They're making these people into these sensational figures now. What you could have done is one story to be like, yeah, this lady's crazy. Um, she thinks that Jew- the Jewish people have a space lizard that causes fires. Okay, uh, where's the evidence? Can you show us? No? All right. I don't think you're a credible person right now. And that's that's it. That's the story. We're done. Instead, they're like th- writing think pieces about this shit. Why? Why are you giving this? Per- you're 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 deplatforming people that have something legitimate to say, and you're platforming people that are throwing out fucking conspiracy theories based on discrimination. That's who CNN and and all of these corporate media organizations are giving voice to, which is the same thing they did to Trump, which is what got him boosted to the level that he was at. I do not believe that this impeachment is going to result in anything good. Um, I think it is performative and I think it is a waste of time. We have people waiting in food lines. We have people that might be getting kicked out of their homes at the end of March. We have people that can't feed their families. We have people that can't afford their health care. We have a lot more bigger issues that if your goal is to unify and heal the soul of the nation, that the Democrats would fucking do something about, especially now that they have the House and the Senate. Wasn't that the promise that they could get a lot more done? And then what are they using their power for? Virtually dick all. Virtually dick all. All right, you guys left some, you guys left a bunch of comments. Arem has moved over to the YouTube's uh, conviction after a presidency is unconstitutional. Oh, and I think you 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 wrote a few of the things down uh, to to talk about that. Uh, the Senate shall have the sole power to trial impeachment when sitting. Uh, for that purpose, they shall be on oath or affirmation. Judgment in cases of impeachment shall not extend further than to rem- uh, removal from office and disqualification to hold and enjoy any office of honor, trust, or profit under the United States. Uh, But the party uh, convicted shall nevertheless be liable and subject to indictment, trial, judgment, and punishment according to the law. Uh, When the president of the United States is tried, Trump is not president. Okay, that is that is fair. And that is actually something that a lot of people have uh, have brought up is that is is he's he's no longer the sitting president. And um trying him for an impeachment is is uh unconstitutional and doesn't make any sense now you could have tried him you could have impeached him on a bunch of different stuff like the emoluments clause for example because he didn't divest from any of his uh fucking businesses so there were legitimate things to impeach trump off of um the, the democrats just never went after it because if because if they did go after him for not divesting from a bunch of you know his corporations and his personal finance financial interests they would have to impeach themselves out of office too because they both parties take fucking get i mean mitch mcconnell argued for that and the only person that pushed back against him was john mccain like if they went after him for the emoluments clause everybody would be like hey what about you guys 
I bet Trump would say that shit. He would put them on blast too, because that's the kind of shit that he does. Oh, and you're saying for people might cherry pick. Yeah, the judgment in the case of impeachment shall not extend further than the removal of office and disqualified to hold any and enjoy office of honor trust. Yeah, okay. I like the word enjoy being a part of that. Don't you like you're you're supposed to have a good time while you're president? <laughs> Uh, Schumer says it's it's it is constitutional. Well, they they like to say a bunch of shit. Uh, and Aram, thank you. They, he's full of shit and a coward who won't take on the CIA, uh, but will spout out soph uh, sophistry and waste taxpayer dollars on anything but ordinary people. Did you guys see that uh, clip of Schumer uh, when he was like talking and and people kept talking about like black lives matter and he couldn't get a word out edgewise it was like kind of sad to watch but also very funny um aiden good to see you good uh death of death star of david was right there and they fucking missed it oh man that is fantastic that is fantastic love it love it uh, Arab says the Trump was impeached twice, but not for legitimate reasons, uh, but never convicted. Correct. Yeah, I think they I think they could have gone after him for um, a bunch of different stuff. Uh, let's look at some Rockfin comments. Uh, these Dems have thrown a tantrum over the insurrection and accountability uh, and light us into war. Uh, people need to have the facts first in order to make logical decisions. That's how propaganda works. Yeah, it's 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 easy to um, when people are in an emotional state to take advantage of that. And I believe a lot of uh, pro capitalist neoliberals do uh, take op they're they're more opportunistic than anything else, and they're and they take the opportunities uh, and you know like when when you're hyper emotional about something like when that should happen i was like holy fuck what the fuck is happening um and, and you know when you take a step back and then start thinking about what happened and what are the right ways to deal with it and so on and so forth um you know uh that's that's when you start th thinking critically when you look beyond the emotion i'm not saying don't have any emotions i'm saying feel your emotions but don't make decisions out of um large emotions and i think when you look at the way propaganda operates psychologically they they wait for opportunities where people are feeling these large emotions and then they go great now we can use this emotion uh as a leverage to push our agenda it's the same thing that happened in 2016 right with people like the people were so fucking freaked out that trump was president now that they took that emotion and they were like well russia did it and everybody's like fucking yeah of course russia did it they can't be the party that I have put all of myself into. Oh, thank goodness. I'm a good person. And then anybody that disagrees with them, they basically shit on and prove that, you know, they're not being a good person. Uh, Jad says, aren't, aren't people tied to the uh, left versus right dichotomy? I am, but you would be surprised how many people are fine with it. Uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's de depressing. Um, AOC is not progressive. She's a hundred years younger than Pelosi. <laughs> She's not, and I and I wasn't saying AOC is is the is the replacement, but I'm saying there is people out there. There, there is people out there. There, <laughs> there are people out there that are that are younger, that are in their 30s and 40s, that do believe in the same principles as someone like Bernie Sanders, right? Uh, and I'm not talking about the same. I'm not talking about the Bernie Sanders that voted for the war criminals uh, in the Biden administration. I'm talking about the the Bernie Sanders that was out there you know, uh, fucking campaigning for the people uh, and, and talking about Medicare for all and talking about em empowering the working class. There's definitely people that are out there. Um, fuck YouTube. I love that. Uh, the road to real insurrection is paved in blood. This is bad, dangerous theater. I agree. Um, and and what they're doing is is sowing more divide uh, within... Um, within our communities and and they're and they're stoking a, they're stoking a much more dangerous fire um i think after the insurrection happened and everybody went home and they were doing all these arrests and stuff we should just leave well enough alone you know um that's that's probably what should have been done uh jad when taxes are being spent on unjust war that's evil 100 percent agree uh fuck youtube says being acted uh, being acted on, be the government, 
uh, like it's reality fucking scary. Yeah. All, I mean, all this stuff should be should be nerve wracking to people. Um, you know, they wouldn't dare use the monuments clause. Holly says they wouldn't dare use the monuments clause. They're all guilty. Yeah, exactly. That's why they didn't go after it. They they didn't go after the real thing that they could have used against them. Um, uh, you know, and and like you guys have been saying in the comments here. This is dangerous performance. This is a very dangerous performance. And I think it's going to, um, it's going to be worse. It's going to get worse if they continue down this track. Um, Aram, since Biden, the sitting president, is not being tried, no need for the chief justice either. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not entirely too sure. I, like, I don't know the specifics of the impeachment process, but I do know you have to be a sitting president. I, I believe Nixon was still a sitting president when he was impeached. Um, and same thing with, uh, uh, with uh, you know, Billy Boy Clinton there. So, uh, and, and it's, you know, I, I, I think with Aram putting in all of these things, uh, I, I think it's, it, it's, it's probably good for me to learn that sort of stuff. Uh, and and read and look at the 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 fine details of uh of impeachment and things of that sort. So uh thanks for thanks for lighting the the, the fire under my butt on that one, Aram. I appreciate that. Uh, thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, uh please make sure that you hit the like button, hit the share button, and make sure you're subscribed to my channel, whether it's on Rockfin, YouTube, or Facebook. Especially Facebook and YouTube, they often uncensor people, uh, un unsubscribe people, and they censor this content. So if you want to keep up to date, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell button so you get notifications of when I'm putting up new videos and when I am going live. I usually go live uh, on uh, Fridays and on Mondays. Uh, and if you want more information about a, a bunch of the other stuff that I do. Uh, whether it's my Forkful of Noodles podcast, the Taboo Table Talk interview podcast, or the Road Reflections live streams, uh, make sure you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A dot -H -H com. There you'll find past episodes of, uh, of various shows that I, uh, that I do, as well as information about when I'll be performing live virtual comedy shows the forkful of noodles live virtual comedy shows uh the dates and tickets will be available directly on my website but if you're also on financial stable ground you can help contribute to the show financially by making a one-time donation or becoming a sustaining member which gets you free tickets and bonus content and go to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate to to make any kind of financial contributions but if you can't it's not a necessity most of my stuff is is available for free and for everybody to enjoy. So again, go to krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. -H 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 -A, and I hope to see you at the next video.